very closely. And we can tell you that we talked to restaurant owner Nick Boy, and last week he says he was disappointed by the mayor's state of the city speech, saying that it had very few details about how the city planned away, planned on clearing away the crime on the corner of 12th and Jackson. Well, today, Boy says he's excited about the changes he sees. He's optimistic, but he's wondering if it'll last. Oh, I'm excited. Nick Boy cannot believe his eyes. The corner of 12th and Jackson in Seattle's Little Saigon neighborhood finally clear. Bowie says it's been a massive headache and heartache for his business and so many others. The city has finally taken action uh, on this uh, intersection in uh, Little Saigon, so I'm very excited. Bowie and other small mom and pop business owners have questioned the mayor and demanded action in response to the ongoing trouble spot. They say it's an area that's seen drugs, stolen goods trading hands, and too many shootings. But on Thursday, crews moved in and the trouble moved out. The bus stop there was closed. It has taken months and years, but they finally have taken that away. Police increased patrols on foot and on bike. A mobile police precinct set up across the street. As long as uh, it, the police presence can continue to be there to enforce these illicit activities on a daily basis, uh, then, then I'm very optimistic. But we'll see uh, if there are enough resources. To yeah. On this Saturday, Mayor Bruce Harrell drove by to check on the area to the surprise of some passers-by. Well, we're trying to make this place safe for everyone again, so that's, yeah. what, that's our goal. As for Bowie, he's hopeful, but he's still planning on moving his business to South Center. He wonders how long the changes will last. I'm excited to see uh, their presence there the last three, four days, but like every neighborhood and every business owner is here, are they going to stick around? Do they have any, enough resources to stick around uh, every day to, to enforce those activities? So since the beginning of the pandemic, the UW medical system has had about 18,000 backlog procedures. Health experts say it's going to take a while to clear it. My jaw right here swelled up so bad that I couldn't breathe. Cassie Johnson ended up in the ER and having emergency surgery last summer after her tonsillectomy was postponed twice. Several times during the pandemic, the state put a ban on elective surgeries and put non-urgent procedures on hold. I'm just lucky I got the care that I did when I got it. Noah Atkins, who loves to go horseback riding, hiking and camping, is still waiting for surgery on his foot. I can only stand on uh, the foot for so long because of the osteoarthritis. His surgery on February February 2nd at Harborview was postponed. But now patients in Washington state may begin getting the surgeries they've been waiting for. There is a concern though. You have new people coming in for surgery, plus you have the past list of people that do need the surgery. So I think it's going to put a lot of pressure on the doctors, the surgeons, the nursing. Dr. John Lang with UW Medicine describes what needs to happen to clear the backlog. We think we have about 18,000 across the system. And uh, again, it's about triaging and prioritizing. We are going to be able to address our outpatients, uh, patients that don't need inpatient surgery very, very quickly. UW Medicine will have Saturday surgeries. Cassie Sauer with Washington State Hospital Association says it's going to take a while to clear the backlog. Joint replacements and heart valve replacements and colostomy reversals and uh, surgeries to res remove slow growing cancerous tumors. So all those things have been backlogged. It's, it's a really serious situation. So what started as a walkout in support of a classmate quickly turned into stories being shared about bullying and protests for change. <laughs> Around noon on Friday, Graham Kapowson High School students started to walk out of the building in support of Landon Vance, a special needs student seen getting attacked in a now widely circulated video. Authorities have charged a 15-year-old student with assault. As the crowd grew, they made their way out of the gates and were joined by parents. You guys are powerful. I would like this school to take responsibility. This is for Landon. I am sick and tired. I'm going to cry. I'm so upset. 
seen people bullied and hurt at this school. What's been happening is not okay, and we refuse to let another fight be skipped over. A rallying cry for Landon quickly turning into a protest of justice for others who have been bullied. And we're finding out more and more that he is just how much he is not the only one between um, bullies, uh, both in the school, in other schools, um, children that have spoken up and are actually having the blame placed on them. I feel great. Landon's mother, Nell, said she does not want this to happen to another student. We're hoping for change. That's all we want out of this. We want students to be safe and we want them to be able to use their voice. Bethel School District officials say they look forward to creating a space to discuss what's being said by students, but they add every school in the district takes bullying and fighting seriously. Hi everyone, I'm Preston Phillips from Como News. Thanks for checking out the Como YouTube channel. You can see more of our videos right here by clicking on the video links for more news from the Seattle area and Western Washington. Oh, and don't forget to click the subscribe button below so you don't miss our YouTube updates.